Lord of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth. Dear brethren, the great passage of 1 Corinthians 3 12 through 15 has a great implication for us to note. Philippians 4 19 tells that our Lord God will supply all our needs according to the riches of esteemed glory as we attain through and only our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Whenever our Bible says, do not do this, we have greater riches to be given for us through Christ than what he has actually restricted us to do. The same lesson we learn from 1 Corinthians 3, 12 through 15. If the work of anyone shall be consumed, he shall suffer loss. The popery thinks that they shall suffer purgatory now. Lot didn't go once again to build what he has lost, but he was a saved person. The remaining things was burnt off. He was being warned through his wife not to turn back and look. But she turned back and she became a salt pillar. The purgatory process which they go, which they think that after that they have some process to be cleansed and get back, is satanic to the core. To tell to this person while here on this earth, not to give number one priority for doctrine, but rather to taste, to handle, and to be with that which Bible restricts not to be. Giving them permission to think. So that in the purgatory you can be once again purified, but Bible says no. But the example of Loth as well. He was a saved man, but all his works were destroyed. His wife wanted to look, and she lost. She didn't, she didn't even think of what it would be to disobey God's word. And that is the fate you and I need to look. When we neglect the word of the Lord, when we reject to take Bible doctrine number one priority, that day is a day of salt for you, like that Lot's wife, she disobeyed. Today, if you are not taking Bible doctrine and to yield the work so that it should not be burnt off, but rather to build a foundation upon gold, silver, and precious stones, which is by the mental ministry of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, then you have lost it by con being consumed with the things pertaining with wood, hay, and stubble. And that's what Bible rejects for us to tell, to tell to you the truth. Be careful as such how we are going to construct your house. The Roman Catholic people might have thought it would be better for them to go to this purgatory process. But the Bible is evidently clear, much less that he shall be cast into the hell of fire, but only he shall suffer the loss. What loss then will be he suffer? We say he will be an eternal loser, loser believer. He will lose the reward that he might have been received when he would have been faithful enough in taking the word of the Lord in which the kingdom which is to come, the manifest kingdom of Christ, wherewith Christ will be the king and his saints are to reign with him. It is with reference to that coming kingdom that our works will be tried. The place we shall occupy in the kingdom, the place of honor and authority, will be determined according to the faithfulness in the smaller stewardship of our service on earth, which has been known in the parable of nobleman in Luke 19.21. And that parable of the nobleman teaches to us that whoever 
rejects that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ should reign over them, they are, will be counted as enemies and they will be slew up. And the one who wills, God will give him more. And the one who doesn't even what he has will be taken out. If you will to build up your house in the knowledge of Bible doctrine to the mental ministry of Lord the Holy Spirit, Lord will give you greater grace to earn more, to do greater business with God. The one man of what he has done, he thought that our Lord is an astute man and he will judge where he has not sold. And many of the people today may think the same thing. We don't know proper education, we don't know proper Greek, we don't know proper Hebrew, we don't know proper Aramaic. But how is it that we cannot really come to the realization of the reality of the word? But God has given to you your evolution, your desire as Moses. Exemplified in his life, telling that I shall go and see why the tree is not being consumed. You don't have that. That's why you find it hard like an astros man that God is. Where he has not sowed, there he wants to reap. Every believer has been given the same desire, the same volition, the same accuracy for the truth. God is not a man that he could be partial. With God there is no partiality, neither God is a man to respect the persons as per their nearness. God is the same. And this is what we learn. The one who desires for the truth. God is not an astute man to give you where you have not sowed. But if you will more, God will give you more. In my case, it was my desire to have a right and true fellowship with my Jehovah. That's it. And no other prayer than that. And Lord directed me to one of the great men of all time. Robert Bunker Thime in teaching the words from the original languages of the scriptures. Now I am boasting of myself, but I am telling you, if it can happen in my case, it can happen in your case as well. To whom much will be, to whom who desires and who wills the more, God will give him the more. And the one who never, God will take away even that what he has. The same thing has been taught in Second Peter 1.11. For thus shall the entrance into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be richly furnished unto you. And this may be illustrated by the cases of Abraham and Lot. The one was called the friend of God, the father of faith, and maintained the path of faith and obedience. Such a one will have an abundant entrance into the coming kingdom. The Lot, on the other hand, was saved, though he was a believer, so as through the fire all his works destroyed, a saved man, but his life was a lost life. The same, the same thing we read in the book of Revelation, chapter 5. The saints are seen as the 24 elders enthroned around the throne of God as worshippers. In the 19th chapter, the same saints are seen as the armies which are in the heaven coming forth to execute judgment and to take the kingdom of Christ. Therefore, dear brethren, when Lord can supply us all our needs to the riches of his grace and esteemed glory, and when he says, no, you don't do this, and follow up in the word of the Lord in Romans chapter 6 as well. Not once again being bondage to the old sin nature. But rather now you are a slave to your Lord God the Holy Spirit who permanently dwells in you. How great it would be for us to look. How great it would be for us to have the true proper reasons of rejoicing in the Lord. Because rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice evermore. The joy of the Lord is our strength. That... We rejoice, for he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. In his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Quantity of joy and pleasure, for it is a fullness of joy. The duration of it is forevermore. The joys and pleasures of this world are for a moment and always leave a feeling of emptiness. But his presence with us gives us peace and security. Even though we may sometimes walk through the valley of the shadow of death, each of us with true confidence can say with David, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, O Lord. When we will in his presence, we can confidently claim the many wonderful promises, as in Psalms 91, what a joy to experience day after day. His promise in Psalms 32, 8, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go, and I will guide thee with my eye. 
What a great cause for joy in such a presence of our Lord when we simply obey and have faith in Him. The more time we spend in the Lord's presence, the more we learn in it, of His will for our lives, and particularly in this church age, Aleke Neketesus. And the more we will be conformed to His image. But we are all looking on the glory of the Lord with unveiled face, are transformed according to the same image from glory to glory, even as by Lord God the Holy Spirit. Yes, we can rejoice evermore, not only in this earth, even in the kingdom to come. Because our sins were all forgiven, and our Lord is with us always, and He shall be with us forever, to give you those moments of joys and pleasures and the fullness of joy, and that's what you and I have to know. The great riches our Lord has given. The great kingdom where our Lord wants to build us up. And the great reality of the world. Dear brethren, time is too short for us. And we cannot pay it at the cost being burnt off at the judgment seat of Christ. We need to take either gold, silver, or precious stones and be constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and know the truth and learn the truth. So which way you want to go, you decide. We shall continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to link to Lord God, the Father, that you shall believe upon Christ. That is the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple believing Christ. You shall be saved. And whereas for the believer, the great man is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, so that in the divine dynasphere under the operating power of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, you shall learn the truth and the truth shall set you free. And whereas for the pastor teacher, the great man is to carry Sothon Laga and herald the word in season or out of season. Because for the diamond from our witnesses, wherewith you have been called, the indwelling Trinity, followed by Bible in our hands, and the witnesses being our hearers, who is none other but the one who can listen to this tape. And the great diamond from our witnesses, wherewith you have been called, if there are no hearers, do not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host, and that get the Holy Spirit will be our witnesses. And why do you want to exchange the glory of Lord for the softness of this world? Rejoice evermore in Christ. Rejoice in the Lord. Because the joy of our Lord is our only strength. To have joy of our Lord, put an end to the sin. The power of the old sin nature being rising, tempting always you to sin. So which way you want to go, you decide. We shall continue and come back tomorrow. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that I was given to fellowship with you through the word. We pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit will enlighten us on these things and make it a source of blessing and challenge, sovereign Lord. For we ask it in Christ's name, Father. Amen.